And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness' sake, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You can't go through the Beatitudes of Jesus as we have gone through them in these podcasts and not realize that they're all built one upon the other, that they're the foundation of what it means to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you look at the very first Beatitude in verse 3, It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is open to them. And by the time you get to blessed are the peacemakers, the second from last of the Beatitudes, it says, for they shall be called the sons of God. So you've gone from entrance into the kingdom of heaven to being called a son of God and being given a ministry. Now, we have to understand, of course, that when Jesus was talking to these people, that he was talking to people that believed the Messiah was going to be a great warrior like David, that he was going to lead the nation of Israel into victory over their oppressors, the Roman government. And they would again be like a great kingdom in in Solomon's day. But then Jesus dashed all of their dreams and and dismantled all of their thinking about the kingdom of God and their role in it. And that is that it would be a kingdom of peace and that we would have a job. Now, what is our job? I'm not talking about who we are in Christ I'm talking about our occupation for the Lord, if you will. I think the answer is given in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And it says there, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through the Lord Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Let me stop here and say that if you do not have peace and you do not have a ministry of reconciliation, it's because somehow you have missed the previous Beatitudes that we've talked about that bring a person to a state of mind called blessedness, which is beyond happiness. That state of mind of blessedness, if it's not yours, you you need to go back to the first beatitude and try to walk through each of those steps again. That is, understand that you're poor in spirit, that you have no way to reach God on your own merit, and then uh, mourn over the broken relationship that you have with God because of sin, and then become meek, give the, the reins of your life over to God. And then live hungering and thirsting after righteousness and right relationship with God. And then being merciful to others because you've received mercy. And then being pure in heart, having your mind fixed upon the purity of Jesus. And seeing God in every place and everywhere that you go. And then you'll have peace. And then you'll have a ministry, and it's called the ministry of reconciliation. But listen to who you are. He says that in God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors. 
for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Did you hear that? We're ambassadors. Being an ambassador for a country is a great honor and a great privilege and a great profession. To be an ambassador for a country, you have have got to know the leader of your country and his will and his desires. To be an ambassador, you've got to know the laws of your country, the kind of country it is. And you've got to know the values of your country so that you can share those values with other countries as an ambassador. Well, we're ambassadors and we're ambassadors who work under the Prince of Peace, who is our leader. And we preach the gospel of peace. And we're citizens of the kingdom of peace. You know, those who were listening to Jesus' message the first time had to make a decision. Were they going to continue to look at the Messiah and life as they had interpreted it before Christ? Or were they going to change, accept the job and the work and the ministry of being an ambassador of peace to the kingdoms of for the kingdom of Christ to the world around us? And that's the same decision that we have to make every day. In every way, in every place we go, because our kingdom is different. Our kingdom is not of this world. And so in every place that we go, we represent the kingdom of peace. And sometimes it's even in our own home. Sometimes it's with our work and our fellow employees. Sometimes it's, it's a church where we have to fight and struggle. It says in Ephesians that we have to uh, be diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That means that there are going to be times when there won't be peace and there won't be unity. But we have a job to be diligent to preserve the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. That means that we have to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God wherever we are. And here's the question I guess we have to ask each other. And that is, am I an ambassador of peace? Not should I be one. That question's already taken care of. But wherever I go, do I, do I bring about peace or do I, I stir up strife? If there's a problem in my family, do I cause the problem to be worse? Or do I work on a solution and, and help to bring peace in my family? If there's turmoil in church, am I working to, to bring peace instead of turmoil? These are questions that we have to ask one another. In Romans 14 and 19 says, So then let us pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God because Jesus Christ lives in us. In 1 John, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. That's a scripture of great comfort to know that my life is hidden with God in Christ. And as he is, so am I in this world. And Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. The peace Jesus gives cannot be found in this world. There is no peace, Isaiah 48 and 22, for those in this world. But in Jesus Christ, when we follow the Beatitudes, when we step by step become sons of God, then we find this blessedness which goes beyond human happiness. So we just need to stop here. 
and ask ourselves, am I pursuing peace? Am I a minister of reconciliation, an ambassador for Christ? If I am, I'm a son of God. And if I am, I cannot pursue peace as the world knows peace. I cannot turn my head and act as though something is not happening that is wrong and that is evil, that is causing trouble, or sweep it under the rug, but be an active force for the peace of God in this world. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If this podcast has been of an encouragement to you, please go to johndkimbrough.com and hear more. Thank you.